Hey, good morning, everybody. It's uh, Tuesday, February 23rd, and uh, this is a great week. I turned 55 this week. 55! I get deals somewhere, so I'm pretty pumped about that. And uh, uh, I love being here. I love being a part of this church. I love all that God's doing. And uh, there's been some exciting things going on. You know, we had a great elders meeting on Thursday night last week, and then a worship and prayer night on Friday night, and just a great sense of the spirit in the room. Um, the, the weekend services, you guys are really digging the um, house rules thing, and I'm really enjoying preaching them, and Jim, and next week Michael's preaching, and uh, so it's great to be engaging, to see so many of you engaging and reading the Bible together. Um, you know, God is doing a work. Something is stirring up here at ACC, and I'm really, really happy about that, and I pray that God will continue to do that, continue to draw us to himself continue to uh, inspire us with his word and, and empower us by the Holy Spirit to live the kind of lives that he wants us to live. Those lives that will bring us the most joy and the most peace and the most uh, encouragement that we could possibly hope for in this life. It's not to say that this life's going to be easy, that everything's going to work out. Of course, that's not how life works. But it does mean that with Christ with us, we have an anchor. We have a uh, uh, one who um, understands what we're going through, who can come alongside us as a comforter, as a brother, as a friend, as father, and one who at times can miraculously uh, calm storms. So that's what's so great about our Lord Jesus Christ. He is uh, faithful and powerful and understands um, and we can approach him with boldness and confidence, not because of anything we've done, but because he's made the way available to us. Tomorrow night, we're going to have a town hall meeting uh, as we talk about our Room to Grow campaign. And I want to give you a little insight into kind of what to expect then. And I've invited uh, Ryan Hogan, who's the chair of our board, and uh, I'm going to interview him today about Room to Grow, about town hall, and about whatever else God might lead us to. So let's go to Ryan now. Hey, Ryan, how are you doing today? Fantastic. I Good would time. say never been better, but it's winter in February. It's not the best, but it's, it's good. winter. Good. It's COVID. We're parents. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You're locked inside, but it's too cold to go outside very long. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. Luckily, this week's been a lot warmer than last week. So, yeah. That's, yeah. really, that's good. <laughs> yeah, and anything is warmer than two weeks ago. So. That's right. So we're, we're, we're laughing up the right tree. Laughing yep. up the right tree? That was an analogy. I think barking up the right tree? Okay, that, yeah. <laughs> well, it's so good to have you on here, Ryan. I'm good to have you on here as a member of the church and a friend of mine, but also as a chairman of our board. And mm -hmm. um, you've done an excellent job. And your, your, uh, your cycle is coming to an end here pretty quick. Yeah, I'm done. I'm done in after our next annual meeting next fall. Oh my goodness, that's too soon. So you're gonna have to replace me. So you, <laughs> you'll probably need at least two or three skinny people to do that. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm sort of in the same boat there. And uh, I just I'm just looking at some uh, some health things. Jennifer, I'm looking to make some health changes. So I need yeah. to lose some weight. So looking forward to that. Okay. Anyway. Uh, I do love you. love serving with you on the board. And um, I want to talk a little bit about Room to Grow today. Um, mm. you know, people have lots of, lots of questions and uh, are curious about what's happening. And so I wanted to just hear from you and from a board perspective. Um, why, are we, why are we, in your mind, launching Room to Grow again now? Well, it's been interesting. When we decided to suspend it in, in the spring, we had, we had rolled out our vision. Um, uh, we'd rolled out our, our capital campaign. We started soliciting, like getting people to start praying and talking as, as families and individuals about how they could support this vision. When COVID came just with all of, all of the uncertainty that came with it and the difficulties that people have been having over the last year that still aren't gone for lots of people, um, financially and with work and all those things, um, we felt it was good to put hit pause. Things were too unknown. Yeah, we didn't know is this going to be two weeks? Is it going to be two months? Here we are now, ten months later, like almost ten and a half months later, 
uh, almost coming up on a year and COVID is still with us. It's still an issue. Um, but the vision for Alliance Community Church in Sylvan Lake and the vision for Sylvan Lake itself, that hasn't gone away, mm. right? We, we still want to see people come to Christ. We still want to make sure that we're feeding the hungry and, and the poor, providing for widows and orphans. Um, all the things that we're called to in the Bible, we still believe that that is at, like our preeminent thing that we need to do in the town of Sylvan Lake. Yeah. So that hasn't gone away. So when we started praying again, you know, this fall and this winter and reassessing it, while we can't meet, we don't need a big room right now. We don't need, we're not busting at the, well, we're busting at the seams as we're, we're bumping up against the government limits for how many people we could have in the building. Right. But we got plenty of room when the COVID is gone for people to come to church again and, and attend and, and the meetings we do during the week and that kind of stuff. But the needs of Sylvan Lake have definitely not gone away. Right. If anything, it's become more important. It's become more pressing right? Most people know someone whose job and income and their stability in their lives has been upended by COVID. Um, and we believe that while we don't need, before, so before you, you, you spoke on this, Pastor Tim, when you an announced it again, where before it was, you know, we wanted this land to build a building and then, and then bless the town of Sylvan Lake. Right. Now the focus has moved to well, let's get this land. Let's bless the town of Sylvan Lake. Let's find some partnerships with other, with other groups and people in town so that we can bless the town of Sylvan Lake, that we can provide for the needs of the town. And then when we need to, we also have land for us to grow. Yeah. So that's, that hasn't gone away. Uh, that We've kind of just flipped it on its head a little bit. We've just inverted it. Yeah, yeah but it's the same end goal and it's the same mission, if you will. Now, how do, how does the, um, how does the board, the uh, board of elders, how are they, are they united on this? Is there tension there? Is there lots of arguing back and forth or where do they stand on this issue? Um, a hundred percent unified. We sat, we prayed, we kind of talked about it. We've been talking about it since we, since we've been talking over more than a year. We've, we've been talking about this, since I've been on the elders board. And as far as I know, it's been talked about longer than that. Right. So we're looking and, at five, six years. We've been talking about yeah, how we create room to grow. Yeah. Expansion and all, and, and, and creating room for people. So this, this conversation has been ongoing for half a decade at least. And when we came up with our plan last winter, um, and presented it to the congregation. We were 100% confident. And his interesting thing is, as an elders board, we, we sat and we began praying. We've been praying for months over this. And we broached the subject again. Hey, when is a good time? And we went around the room after praying and said, hey, does anybody have any uh, fear or concerns about it? We all had kind of concerns about the, the standard concerns of, you know, Where's the money going to come from? Is this the right decision? But when we went around the room and asked the question, like, does anybody have any reasons or feeling a sense in the Holy Spirit that we shouldn't do this? Nobody had any. Mm, yeah. So as the elders were coming back before the congregation now and saying, hey, God has told us, like, we've changed our mission a little bit or not our mission. The end goal is still the same, but we've changed the way we're getting there a little bit. Yeah. Here's what the plan is. Now we're coming before the congregation and going, Hey, here's what we think God is telling us. Please like, Hey, bring your concerns, bring your questions and all these things. Um, so we can talk it out, but here's our plan to move forward over the next four months so that we can at least purchase the land and begin making plans. Right. And it's not like we're saying the elders are saying, this is what we're doing. Right. That's not how we operate. Uh, the elders are there to prayerfully consider something and then present it to the congregation and the congregation votes gets to vote on it. Yeah. 
Yeah, and, and that works. That works about as well as when I tell my kids to do the dishes. Like you, you know, um, that goes over just as well with the congregation. No, no, this is this is uh, the elders are just representatives from the congregation, right? We're just representatives of the membership that is voted in every every year to serve a four year term to to oversee the direction of the church, the spiritual direction and the. Uh, and the general, you know, mission of the church and making sure that we're being effective. So, no, this is, this is, I hope, an outpouring of where the spirit is already moving. Yeah. And all we're doing is attempting to throw up a sail to catch the wind of where the spirit is moving. Oh, I so, like that a lot. So our hope is that um, as people begin to look at the opportunities, the pros and the cons, uh, uh, of this um, acquisition, right? That they'll prayerfully consider and seek after the Lord and where the Holy Spirit's moving, right? And and nobody is compelled. Nobody is forced to do anything. It's we're trusting that if the Holy Spirit is moving, He's going to be moving. He'll be moving in people's hearts, and so that when when the opportunity comes for them to give, it will it will be a, a joyful. Uh, decision for them not a not a guilt decision but the holy spirit mm. will work in their hearts so they're like yes i want to be a part of this yeah and, and that's the goal because we know that people's capacities have changed some have gone down some have gone up some have stayed the same yeah um like even for me this year this year was kind of rough right now it wasn't horrible i didn't lose a job or anything but there was mm. other financial circumstances in there that were pretty fairly related to covid that caused some, you know, some significant stress, right? So, and I know that that lots of people are in that situation, but then lots of people at the same time, you know, have capacity. So, yeah. we're, so what we're ultimately hoping here is not to put guilt on anybody and to not, and to not, um, you know, like I don't even want to put like a fear of missing out in people, mm -hmm. right? This is for like, if you feel led, if the spirit's telling you, it's like, hey, I want to support this, that you prayerfully consider how you support it. Yeah. If you go uh, to the Holy Spirit and, you, and to Jesus and you're praying and you and and it's just not there for you, that's fine. Yeah, that's awesome. Like people have time, talents, treasure, however you serve the church that's giving as well. Right. So it's um, we. We don't want it to be burdensome and it seems big, but it's, it's not that big. Mm. Right. Mm. And that's actually one of the nice things. So I'll, I'll segue to that is, is the one thing that has changed is before, even when I looked at it, we looked at buying the land and it was, you know, $2.4 million. Yeah. Now we're yeah. looking at like 1.5 ish in that neck of the woods. And we're not really even considering raising funds to build a building. That $1.4 million isn't much more than how much we raised to build the building we're in right now. Mm. Right. So just to put that in perspective, and that was, that was, you know, 18 years ago. Yeah. yeah. Like right. So I believe that God is going to be good and that this is a chance for people to grow and it's a chance to return. It's another chance to return back to God and just ask. Hey, what do you, how do you want me to be a part of this? Yeah, totally. Maybe it's nothing. Maybe it's something significant. Maybe it's just a little bit. It, it doesn't matter. It's that it's the act of going before God and asking and just being open. That's the important step. Yeah. Right. And then responding to it. So yeah. asking and listening and then going, okay, yeah, yeah, I, I'm in. I can, I'll do what you're saying, God. That's, yeah, yeah. that's the step of faith. The amount of money doesn't matter at all. Right. Asking, yeah, yeah. listening, and then doing something about it. Yeah. I'm being obedient. Exactly. Yeah. Now we are hoping to have a town hall meeting tomorrow night. Mm -hmm. um, what, uh, what, what is a town hall? Why are we doing this? Why are we doing a town hall meeting? Well, so we want to, give the congregation an opportunity to ask questions um, and to get out some of their um, concerns or their hopes and their visions. Now, 
right now we're mostly concerned about like just so that the meeting doesn't get completely off the rails and we start envis- envisioning our like 70 story steeple that we're going to build <laughs> something like that like i don't know what what crazy idea we might have or, or some of that this is specifically about how does the purchasing of the land work right yeah how's that yeah. going to work how's the how's the fundraising going to work and the steps that we have to make in the next four months here to either move this thing forward or not right so if, if you have questions that's awesome actually if you can I know it's the day before, but if you pre-submit questions, send to Pastor Tim, that would be awesome. Then, yeah, that's great. We can get on them. Yeah. And the format will basically be, uh, it's going to be a Zoom call. It's going to be lots of faces on the call, hopefully. I think we've got, uh, I'm not sure how many signed up, maybe 40 or something like that so far. And um, we are going to, uh, you know, I'll welcome everybody there, give you a chance to say some things. Uh, maybe somebody else will say some things. And then we'll basically just open it up for any kind of questions or comments that people have regarding the purchase of the land. Right. Yeah. And uh, I guess, I mean, if other questions come up, we may be able to deal with them and move on, but we're going to try and stay focused on, on that particular issue. Yeah. Yeah. That'll be really great. And it's gonna um, be awesome. And thanks for being there and being a part of that, Ryan. I appreciate your leadership and uh, um know that you know this is these are exciting days challenging unknowns all of that kind of stuff and you know um we were talking a little bit earlier maybe we can just you and i can sidetrack a wee bit here yeah, for world. sure but just thinking about um there's so much change going on in the church and that's just a difficult thing and mm. sometimes people are can be feeling like man i can hardly wait till we get back to the way church used to be and, um, you know, you had some thoughts on that. What were your thoughts on that? Well, my, my thoughts were is, is the church is an awful lot like a person in that, you know, if let's say two years go by before everything's, you know, wide open again, you know, another year from now, that seems so daunting. But at the same time, anything more, they told us two weeks to flatten the curve two years it's okay like we we need to do what we need to do to keep people safe and healthy um but you know after two years i know i'm not going to be the same person after covid right in fact i would expect and hope that i'm not the same person right because you know you're always trying to work on something in your life yeah so we should expect church to be different we should expect the body of christ to go through some some growth to go through some changes, yeah. right? Like I'm, you can't see it on this video, but my wife keeps telling me I have lots of gray hairs now, right? Like that's just one of the things that, that happens as you grow and get a little bit older. I think it makes me look distinguished. My wife doesn't like them. Uh, whatever. Well, man. I'm turning yeah, 55 this week. 55. It's awesome. So you don't look a day over 54. <laughs> Right. So I uh, know. And that's actually kind of my hope. My hope is that when COVID's over after these, you know, year, two years is over, that Alliance Community Church, while it might look different, is still the same person, but that's grown and matured. Mm-hmm. Um, and not everything that happens or goes on is going to be the right step, but we all kind of make mistakes and then we work really hard to fix them. And then move forward again. Yep. And I yes. feel like there's been a lot of that during COVID. Um, but hopefully when we're at the end of it, it's been a time uh, of growth and change, not a negative. Totally. That Christ can use anything, anything, mm. and turn it for our good. If we lean into him and we surrender to him and we rely on him, then uh, he can take anything and, and turn it into something fantastic. But you're right. And I think, um, and I don't know how things are going to change. We don't know. Right. Um, But I, and, and there's going to be, there is mourning when things change. Uh, I think Mm. about the story um, when the temple was destroyed and uh, when, when uh, Jerusalem was captured by the Babylonians and then uh, 70 odd years later, they go back again and they build a new temple and, some people were 
the young people were cheering and cheering because they mm. finally had a temple and the old people were weeping and wailing because it wasn't like the old temple. Right. And yeah. uh, there, there's a little bit of both of that. There's going to be some cheering and there's going to be some mourning as we, as we try and figure out what our future looks like. And I yeah. know that we're in it together and we're going to figure it out together. And, Absolutely. and I love being a part of this journey with this church boy. And um yeah, I just, our heart for myself and for elders board for our church is we just care so deeply about them and, and uh, want to help with navigating all these changes. Cause there's lots of them that are going to come. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, man, thank you so much for your time. You're awesome. And uh, we got to go hang out again sometime soon. Absolutely. 100%. Hey <laughs> buddy. God bless awesome. You. Thanks pastor Tim. Bye. So I hope that was informative to you and you can have an idea what's going on. If you want to come, please, please um, make sure you uh, text Marlis or email Marlis at alliancecommunitychurch.ca and ask for an invite. Uh, get the Zoom invite so you can be a part of that town hall meeting. It's going to be great. And uh, we're going to have lots of great questions and lots of great answers as we uh, navigate this together. And man, I know there's been lots of change going on at ACC. God's been revealing that to me. And uh, just that's one of the things I want to lean into over this next little while, too, is how we can uh, rely on Christ during these times of change. When there's change, there's sorrow, there's mourning, there's loss, there's fear. People feel threatened when there's change, and so they get their backs up. And I know when I feel threatened, I, I get a bit nasty. And I, I, I talk shorter. Um, I'm less concerned about other people's feelings. And... With COVID primarily is a big one, but other things too. There's been so much change and you can feel like you are on edge a lot. And I just want to encourage you that when you speak to others, you speak to people, you're in your family and, uh, and you're, you know, in people in your homes, but, but also sort of end users, uh, people at the grocery store, people at restaurants, people at the bank, uh, that you, you work hard at speaking kindly, gently, even though you may not feel like that because you just feel tired and worn out. Uh, I think I've mentioned this before, but the verse that's really been inspiring me lately is in Psalm 23, where it says, you, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. And that's what I'm praying for myself, for the people that I love. That's what I'm praying for you, that your cup would overflow. And that out of the overflow of, your, of what God is doing in your life, you'll be a blessing to those around you. I don't want us to live with scarcity, you know, with empty cups, just barely getting enough to get through the day so that we're on edge all the time. So we got one last nerve and someone's stepping on it. I want you to, be, to live lives of overflowing kindness and grace and warmth and love with the people that are around you, overflowing with joy, overflowing with thankfulness. May God do that in our hearts, that we might uh, really be good represent representatives of who he is, good ambassadors for Jesus Christ. As I said earlier, Pastor Michael is preaching this weekend, and uh, we'll be talking about forgiveness. So it's good having Michael back. He's been on paternity leave for about six weeks, and uh, now we get him back in the game, and I just love being around Michael. He uh, fills me with joy and encourages me, and I know he does that for many of you as well. So join us this weekend, either online or live in the services, and uh, we'll finish off our House Rules series. God bless you guys. Love being your pastor. Hope you have a great week. Mm -hmm.